G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel and by extension, the Eagles Corner. And today we are going to do a last little pre-season or off-season update uh, before Christmas and New Year, all the players are going to break up and talk a little bit about uh, what's happening uh, from a West Coast Eagles perspective in terms of training and stuff like that. I do like to keep in touch with what the Eagles are doing. Of course, I live all the way in England at the moment. Uh, so what this video is going to be is kind of me compiling what else is being said by other people who have observed what's happening at training and compiling piling into a neat little Eagles Corner video for you. Uh, yeah, obviously, I'm not there to see the players myself, so I want to give credit to those who actually were there. So, uh, so there was a match simulation training today uh, where we saw a bit more of a competitive hit out between a team dressed in blue and a team dressed in yellow, almost like an intra-club of sorts with most players available on the track. Uh, and this is the last session that occurred before the Christmas break. So we're going to have a couple of weeks or so three weeks maybe, of uh, b between the players coming back uh, for training once more. So uh, I've compiled a few different reports. One of them is by the West Australian. And, uh, you know, for those who don't know, I'm a big big footy guy. I, uh, I love to read big footy. And there's a couple of guys on big footy that are just absolutely phenomenal at updating the rest of us, uh, us peons, about what is happening at the Eagles training. So I just thought I'd, I'd pass on some of the notes that is being said and then offer some of my own thoughts as well. So particular shout out to Little Fires and a gentleman called Kai's. And Kai's, I don't know if you're watching this. I know you've watched one of my videos before. I just want to say you were the best things ever happened to Big Footy. So thank you very much for all your contributions. Cool. So um, I'm just going to give you some notes that were, were given by other people who observed training. So the first of all, from the West, they basically said that this was the final training session before Christmas, as, uh, as we already knew. Um, and the it was a matchup between the two sides and it was an interesting distribution of players. Like, um, for instance, the blue team had Jack Darling and Oscar Allen and they were playing on Tom Barat and Jeremy McGovern. So uh, kind of a battle of the Eagles heavyweights, as it were. Some of the interesting points were from it that Elliot Yo played more as a forward midfielder, which was kind of interesting. I think there's been a bit of uh, conjecture about where this guy plays his football in 2024, what's the best way to optimize his talent while also not putting him in a position to continue getting injured. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I would have assumed that was in the back line with stints on the ball. And it seems like he's playing more as a forward mid and uh, as did Harley Reid, although they played on opposing teams. So potentially is that, you know, broadcasting or telegraphing, is that the word? Telegraphing what's going to happen in uh, 2024. Will we see more of a Yo Reid, uh, you know, rotation there? I think that's pretty cool. Maybe Jinby and Duggan know the backline rotations. We'll, we'll talk about those guys in a minute. Uh, in fact, we'll talk about them now. The next point is that Tyler Brockman and Liam Duggan also both spent time, so like patches, uh, in the center square, in particular Liam Duggan. This one's being talked about a little bit and he might be spending a little bit more time in the guts in 2024. And I'll give my broader thoughts on that a little bit later. So uh, now I'm gonna move on to some of the dot points from Little Fires. Again, shout out, uh, he's done a great job. Uh, he or she has done a great job of reporting what's happening at training this year. So in the game, you know, one of the captains, Alan was, I think on the blue team and then Liam Duggan was captain of the yellow team. Uh, for the most part, just about everyone was there. I think there was about five or six that didn't play. Uh, Sheed and Jamison were not at training. I'm not 100% sure what's wrong with Callum Jamison. Jamison, Jamison. And Dom Sheed is obviously recovering with that hot spot in his foot. Um, so hopefully we'll see him back before long, but I don't know how serious that injury is. Uh, and the others were, you know, uh, Elijah Hewitt has missed a couple of weeks of training. He's been recovering with that toe injury, um, but he did some training today, which I think is the first time he's done that uh, since the um, since the preseason started. And then Archer Reed as well, of course, who is recovering from a pre-existing knee injury. They, uh, they didn't fully take part. Another one is Jack Darling, who uh, I, I've seen it reported a fair bit for a number of weeks now. He's wearing a fluorescent hat to indicate um, that he can't have contact yet. So I don't know what he's recovering from exactly. I seem to recall there was some issue with like an AC joint in his shoulder that he might've done last year. So I'm not sure what that is, but at least he's training, getting in some conditioning. He just can't be tackled yet. Um, and yeah, so Harley Reid, Elliot Yo, and Liam Duggan according to Little Fires, were all seen as uh, inside mids at various points during this game. And there was a good clearance from Tyler Brockman as well, uh, which is interesting. So again, I, I want to touch on that. Um, the, it's this interesting idea of a midfield mix going forward in 2024, where we're seeing maybe a bit more of a ragtag midfield combo than we have seen in previous years, where play, players have had their defined roles. We've had you know, Shuey, Yo, Red and Kelly, when they're on the park, are generally midfielders. Obviously, a couple of those have moved sideways and out as well. But, you know, when you consider the fact that Dom Sheed might be injured going into 2024, again, I don't want to, like, uh, perpetuate that if it's not 100% correct that he's going to be long-term injured. 
But when you factor in, even with Sheed and Kelly as our frontline midfielders, it does feel like there's a big gap until the next most experienced midfielder. It's probably Jinbi, right? Unless I'm missing something really obvious, which is entirely possible. I am quite tired. But uh, my point being here is, you know, maybe it's a way to offer some support and some coverage for some of the younger guys rather than having Jinbi play entire minutes playing as an on-ball rotation. And same thing with Harley Reid. He's not going to be ready yet. Elijah Hewitt equally already had a bit of a... Um, what's the what's the preferred like a weakness with his um, his conditioning? You know he, he doesn't quite have the stamina yet to play on ball full time. Let alone if he's missing some preseason action as well. Uh, so my point being here is maybe Kelly and maybe in the absence of Sheed as well, we're going to see Duggan roll through for a few more minutes there, even though he might not necessarily be the most talented midfielder, you know, in terms of, you know, being a backline uh, general is kind of what his thing is. Him playing as a midfielder might be kind of there for coverage as well. And it kind of also offsets from a skill set point of view pretty well from guys like Jinbi and Reed, who are kind of bulls, okay? And, and Duggan might be more of a first receive uh, outside kind of mid. It does say he was listed as an inside mid, but he could still be that first receiver and try and drive the ball inside 50. That's probably something we're going to lack going forward. Um, a couple other points, you know, Rawlinson kicked a nice goal. He was our first pick in the rookie draft and we don't know too much about him, but I do think, I do wonder if we could see a little bit of lock Rawlinson earlier than we expect, mainly because his skill set is around uh, pressure as a small forward. He's a pressure forward. I think that is is a... Uh, really important commodity and not something that we have a lot of. There is Jamie Cripps, but maybe as cover for Cripps or something like that. Uh, and it is different to Noah Long. Noah Long is a bit more of a high half forward. Noah Long was also pointed out for having really good uh, foot skills. I think that was a Kai's point. His, uh, his ball use and field kicking in general was really strong. So maybe we see Long sort of pushing up the ground more, driving the ball inside 50. And maybe someone like a Rock, Lock Rawlinson could find his way into this team earlier than expected. If he makes his niche just... Um, owning defensive pressure, the rest will come. And uh, apparently kicked a nice goal as well. Petrocelli is another player we saw rotated through the midfield. That is not new to us. We did see that last year, um, but I do think that there was some success to that. I don't think he has it quite in his his uh, kit bag to be a full-time midfielder or anything. But I thought that Petch, in a bad team last year, stood up in important moments, really showed some maturity. And I would like to see the progression of that again in 2024. And I would like to see him in the team. And I would like to see him rotating through stoppages. Apparently, he did, uh, kicked a really nice goal running from the back line as well. Another point Little Fires makes is that, uh, you know, a, a few players that seem to be tearing it up on the track uh, a few weeks ago were absent. And I probably should have started with this as well. Uh, but Ruben Jinbi, Jermaine Jones, and Campbell Chesser, who have all been, uh, in particular, Chesser and Jinbi, have all been, you know, training really well and, and putting in good times and stuff like that. I believe none of them actually played in this particular match sim. Um, and hopefully that is just a load management thing. There's nothing to suggest they're injured or anything like that. But, um, you know, they're all young players. Chester in particular has a bad hit, uh, run of uh, injuries, obviously, and, and Jim B with his hamstring last year. So hopefully that's just precautionary. But there's a few players held out, which is a little bit unfortunate given um, those are kind of the players I wanted to hear from in the match sim. But that's all right. The preseason has barely even really started yet. A few other points from Kai's. Again, some of these overlap, but uh, Johnston, apparently Harvey Johnston, our new draftee, uh, played on the wing. So that was just one that probably isn't a shock. It's just that we didn't know fully exactly where he was going to start his AFL career. And uh, I, again, I still think Harvey Johnston is probably more of a long-term thing. I'd be surprised if he debuts as early as next year. But it's nice to have some outside running characters. I don't think we have a lot of depth, even from a young talent point of view, of a genuine wingman. Someone like Brady Hoff still playing in the back line. Who knows? Uh, but the same thing with Burgeal, actually, another good example. Uh, but Johnston was playing on a wing. And the other point that Kai's made is that uh, Ryan, Liam Ryan doesn't look fully 100%, walking with a little bit of a limp, apparently. Having said that, though, still involved a lot in, uh, in a lot of the drills and still you know, taking part uh, uh, clearly on reduced minutes and stuff like that. So uh, Liam Ryan is not fully fit. Uh, however, the fact that he's taking part in these drills is a really good sign. So I'm not too sure what his issue is. I really hope, as I'm saying that, it isn't a case of us running him into the ground, um, which I don't want to be negative about. It's just that we have a really bad track record with this sort of thing. Um, so some final points, I guess, to summarize as well. You know, Harley Reid uh, playing as a midfielder forward, I think that, uh, well, it can kind of confirms what we can expect to see from him in 2024. Um, you know, previously I'd theorized, oh, maybe maybe it's kind of fun to see him off the halfback flank as that loose defender, a bit like Sheasel. Not for really any real reason, other than I think it's easier for him to do well and really impact in his first season. 
Is that necessarily good for his development? Uh, maybe not. Maybe maybe it's best to chuck him where he's going to, you know, play the peak of his career, right? So I may have suggested Harley Reid as a backman for maybe one or two years. Uh, I don't necessarily think that's the best use of his top end talent when he's like in the peak of his power, so to speak. So yeah, long story short, Harley Reid is probably going to be a forward midfielder, probably spending more time forward than mid, I would have thought, probably just a burst player in the midfield there. Um, like I said, just going to be a interesting mix of midfield rotations this year with Kelly and Sheed. Let's assume Sheed's fit. You've got the young on-ballers in Reed, Jinby and Hewitt, you'd expect to see in there. Um, and then some rotations from guys like Brockman, uh, Petricelli, and Elliot Yo as well. And we expect to see Yo a little bit, but uh, I'd imagine not full time. Other than that, just a few comments on some physical transformations. We talked about Jinby, this guy is enormous um, and putting in some really good times and looking fit. So uh, we knew about that, but it is still a physical transformation nonetheless. Uh, I've talked about Noah Long as well. He's looking pretty lean. I feel like there has been a transformation there in the sense that he just looks a lot more athletic. He's a year older too. Obviously, when he was drafted to us, he looked like a little kid. Uh, but now he looks much more athletic, which I think hopefully bodes well for him. Even Jamie Cripps, I saw a photo of him. He's looking, His face is looking a little bit more angular. I just think it looks like he's dropped a few kilos probably just to keep up his running capacity. And I think that works well at that stage of his career. And Jai Cully is another one who's obviously recovering from that ACL. And his upper body looks a lot bigger than it did, you know, 12 months ago uh, or even six months ago. And we do know he's a big frame. He's about 6'4", uh, but we're starting to see that evolution for him into his, what will hopefully be his his peak size pretty soon. So overall, guys, that's just the notes from the uh, match team. I just thought I'd cover off a few points there and give some thoughts. Um, hope this has been useful to you. Again, not trying to pass off information as my own. I give plenty of credit to Little Fires, Kai's, and of course, an article in the West Australian. But Obviously, that would be kind of it for West Coast updates for a few weeks, um, but I'll still bob up every now and then. Um, and I will make some general content about other AFL teams and their pre-seasons, but obviously I'm a lot more invested in the Eagles and it's a lot easier to make these comments. Um, doing one club videos in the way that I have been is, is challenging enough, let alone covering all the pre-seasons. So we'll see where we go from here, guys, but I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you're um, enjoying the content. I hope you're subscribed to the channel. And for now, I'll see you later. And have a good Christmas. Cheers.